AVC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be a quick response into a uh, Christian uh, CGC vinyl. His, um, I guess, kind of his one-year celebration contest, where he's uh, he's doing um, a contest, just kind of celebrating his first year in the vinyl community. And um, yeah, I just want to kind of jump on board and you know say number one, congratulations. I know you're coming up on that date. And, um, you know, you've been a supporter of my channel. I really appreciate that. And want to just kind of jump on board. So he's also doing a push to 800 subs. So, you know, definitely make sure you kind of go over to that link down below. Check out his channel and sub. And, uh, yeah, let's celebrate his one year. Um, nice, simple, straightforward type question. You know, playing off of one year, 365. Uh, show three albums in one genre, six albums in another genre, and five albums in another genre. So plain and simple. And I started pulling a bunch of stuff out and I kept changing my mind about what genre I wanted to do. So I pulled like five dream pop albums out and I put those, they're actually still sitting here. Then I pulled three free jazz albums out and I put those back. So I finally got it narrowed down to my, my genres here, which I thought I would go with genres maybe that aren't talked about as much in, in the VC. So, uh, let me start off with my first genre with three albums, and it's going to be some of my favorite uh, African artists. All right, so uh, three of those, starting off one here, arguably one of my favorites right here, actually, uh, Sam, Sam Magawana and the African All-Stars. Uh, there's a big, long history of this album with me, you know, going way back to me being, you know, kindergarten, first grade with my dad and the whole nine, because my dad's is a first generation from Africa. Um, and so, yeah, so this album, number one, has a ton of meaning to me, and it's just the songs and stuff on here just got drilled into my head when I was a kid, and I love, love, love this album. It took me quite a while to find it, but I, I won it on eBay about six, seven years ago, and just a fantastic one to have in my collection. Very, very meaningful to me. Uh, number two out of the three, um, Miriam Akiba. And kind of the exact same thing as Sam Magawana. You know, this was some stuff my dad listened to quite a bit growing up. And it's just another one of those amazing, amazing, legendary African artists that just really means a lot to me. And that's a fantastic album by her. And last but not least, Lady Smith Black Mambazo. And this is Shaka Zulu. Uh, they have a number of different albums out. And this is definitely my absolute favorite album by them. Um, a lot of you probably will know them if you're not, you know, into African music or whatever, but you'll probably know them as like all of the, the background African vocals that you heard on Paul Simon's Graceland. All of that was uh, Lady Smith Black Mombazo. Um, you know, just a, an acapella group about anywhere from, you know, 11 to 13 guys and just, I mean, just the amazing, amazing performers, singers, the whole nine. I actually took my parents to see them in concert one time, and it was just fantastic. So that's definitely one of my favorites right there as well. So that's three from my, um, it's in my world category, reggae slash world, but you know, three of my favorite African artists. So then with the six, another genre I think that doesn't get quite enough love in the VC is going to be 80s R&B. All right, so that's what I'm going to show here. So we'll start off with one of my absolute favorites from that that time frame which is ready for the world this is their self-titled album from 1985 and just so 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 many amazing hits on this album um you know definitely some slow jams on here but then also kind of some more upbeat 80s dance type of stuff but just su such a, a a cool cool you know kind of the electronic drums and the the synth and bass grooves and all of that but you know, stuff like Tonight, Digital Display, Deep Inside Your Love, Slide Over, just jam after jam after jam. And probably the biggest hit that most people will recognize off of this album, which is the song Oh Sheila. So, uh, yeah, just, I mean, that's just one of my absolute favorites. So that's one. So number two from 80s R&B, we're going to go with one of the legendary bands, in my opinion, from that time frame, which is Cameo. So many albums you, you can pick by them. I just decided to go with She's Strange. Um, you know, Cameo is the band that I always describe as being one of the most rock and roll R&B bands, especially throughout the 80s, that just kind of, you know, they had silliness, they had funk, they had, 
you know, just they just kind of did whatever they wanted to do. It didn't have to make sense. It was just what they felt and what they produced. Uh, that's just kind of what you got. Now, most people that aren't into them will still kind of know them with, you know, songs like Word Up was, you know, such a gigantic uh, kind of commercial hit, not on this album, but uh, by the band. But yeah, this kind of early to mid 80s stuff by them is just where to me they were golden. And this is 1984. Uh, so songs like She's Strange or their album that came after this with things like Single Life and uh, Attack Me With Your Love and just all kinds of jams my boys right there so that's cameo next we have Sherelle who is definitely one of the the big female artists in kind of that 80s ca uh, R&B category uh, she did a lot of duet stuff too with Alexander O'Neill who is also someone that was fairly fairly big during that time frame at least in the 80s R&B realm and Alexander O'Neill was actually the lead singer of the time before he left because Prince was kind of exerting too much control so Alexander O'Neill left and that's when Prince brought in Morris Day to uh, front the time so her and Alexander O'Neill they both had their individual careers put out great individual albums but they would always just kind of do duets on each other's stuff and so uh, you know this is kind of a great example you know she had awesome dance hits like you look good to me uh, not on this album, but on another album, she did a cover of uh, I Didn't Mean to Turn You On, which was a, a pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, the song Saturday Love, which was the duet she did with Alexander O'Neill on here, is one of my absolute 80s slow jams there as well. So, uh, just again, one of my, my favorites from that time frame. Another one here, Five Star. Again, one of those bands that wasn't necessarily huge and that type of thing, but I remember the videos on Video Soul coming on all the time and the big hit they had on here which was Can't Wait Another Minute just kind of another you know kind of 80s R&B dance type of thing and it was just one of those songs that that made a uh, childhood kind of great so uh, that's another one and I think we got two more here for the six uh, Jesse Johnson review another really good album here again Jesse Johnson was the guitar player for the time so after the time kind of broke up, this was his, I think it was his first solo album that he did here. Uh, no gigantic, gigantic hits off of this, but my favorite song is definitely probably Be Your Man. Uh, this came out in 1985. So, you know, again, another cool one there. I actually haven't spun that in a while. I'm gonna have to throw that on after I finish the video here. And then one of my absolute ultimate groups from, from the 80s R&B scene is this one right here which is the SOS band man I mean just the real deal yeah I'm, uh, that's, that's all I can say uh, this is band on the rise of this album uh, this from 1983 they had so many amazing hits uh, and again if you haven't if you don't really know them the two songs you've probably come across at some point in time is um, uh, take your time you know baby take your time do it right um, and then also uh, just be good to me that used to be used as, as an introduction to one of the wrestling channels I can't remember what it was but they used to use that as their intro but again just another one of those bands that just represented the smoothness of 80s R&B um, my arguably my favorite song by them on this album which is tell me if you still care but on their album after this, they had another song called Weekend Girl, which is also my jam. I mean, just, uh, again, so much great stuff. So, so those are kind of six from the 80s R&B. And then another genre I thought, once again, that doesn't get a ton of love that I would show for my five, smooth jazz. Okay, I mean, I've, I've always been a big fan of smooth jazz. And the first album that brought me to jazz, period, before I ever really discovered my Coltrane, Miles Davis, and all that stuff, the first jazz album that I ever bought and liked and listened to on the regular was Kenny G Live. And still to this day, I, I love this album. I mean, not ashamed to say it, I am a fan of Kenny G without question. And, um, and this album, again, was the very first one that I ever really loved. And pretty much every song on here, I think, is just fantastic. I mean, yeah, it's it's elevator type of music, you know, it's smooth jazz, it's 
it's predictable very easy to access jazz but Kenny can play I mean the boys got skills and from a a, a, a um, you know it's just good stuff that's how I'm just gonna put it that way so great smooth jazz album there another one which can kind of fall under smooth jazz and also maybe a little bit under the R&B scene but you know George Benson kind of played around a lot of different different plates there but uh, this is Gimme the Night you know yep, just probably my favorite George Benson album uh, with classics like the song Gimme the Night I mean just um, again amazing artist amazing album uh, another one you're probably like who the heck is this but Jim Horn Neon Knights when I first got into jazz I remember I was digging through a CD bin and I found this CD it was only 50 cents and I thought oh that's a guy with a sax you know I'll check it out why not it's only 50 cents I remember buying it and I was you know listen to it and I was like that's a free a good freaking smooth jazz album so then years down the line I actually stumbled across a nice promo copy of it a gold stamp promo and was able to pick it up but again your your late 80s mid to late 80s typical smooth jazz stuff right there and the last two Najee here and this is day by day uh, same thing just you know the pretty much sounds exactly like the cover looks <laughs> but uh, just another very good smooth jazz artist that I got into about maybe six years ago seven years ago or something like that I've picked up a few of his albums here and there but just some more stuff that I really like and last but not least this is one that has to go on any smooth jazz list which is Chuck Manigoni feels so good which uh, especially being a smooth jazz song that I think kind of topped the pop charts as well but um really is just kind of a you know, smooth flow to that song like I mean, the name of it actually fits it really good because it is just a a feel so good kind of song but uh yeah i mean the whole album is pretty cool and you know chuck was the man so that's another great one there so there you go man there's my 365 of just kind of some different random genres that i like um again congrats christian and let me know what you think and we will talk to you soon guys all right take care